What's up guys? Welcome to Books Are Sick. I am Nick. This is week 41 of doing these videos every single week, except for one week when I was a little too sick to do it. But been a nice, consistent thing that has uh, been going on, and I really have been enjoying doing these. I really appreciate you guys like tuning tuning in or whatever to uh, to watch me just sit here and talk about books and my week and whatever. Um, so yeah, this is week 41, and I've got some stuff to talk about today, namely the book club poll, which we have a winner for. For those that don't know, we're doing a Stephen King month in November, and so... What I had people do is basically vote on every single Stephen King book that he's ever released, outside of Cujo, because we already read Cujo for the book club, and the Dark Tower books. Also didn't include Dark Tower books for, for obvious reasons, but um, yeah, we uh, we have a winner, and I don't know, maybe it'll surprise you, maybe it won't, but I'll share that in a second. Got some merch updates, got some book pickups, Some uh, I finished a book, reading current books, next reads, uh, the scariest movie I've seen in a long time I can share with you. Um, and yeah, that's about, I don't know, that'll be about it, I would, I would imagine. So, if you have a coffee, grab your coffee, warm up your hands, let's have a sip. Mmm. <laughs> this is, uh, I don't want to say what number of coffee this is for me. It's actually, it's hard to keep track sometimes, because what I've been doing is I get to, like, I get to the halfway point, and I'm like, hmm, let's warm it up, and then I fill it, and then I get to the, you know, I just kind of keep doing that, and I'm like, I actually have no idea how many cups of coffee I've had, but... We'll see if it's noticeable. Okay, so uh, well, let's do let's do the Stephen King book club poll first because uh, I, that, this has been really really fun. I, I, at first, when I decided when I decided well we're gonna do a Stephen King month for November, I was like, do we do I just take like all the B sides kind of books that like not more like a lot of people talk about, or do I do all the hits and have people vote on the hits? I didn't really know what to do, and so what I ended up doing was just a big extravaganza where we vote on every single book he's released and so I thought it would be fun to see which one makes it to the end I can tell you uh actually let me pull it up here quickly I can sh uh, share with you which made it to the top 10 and then maybe you can guess what the winner was um the top 10 let me pull it up here real fast was might not be a huge surprise but it was Misery, Pet Cemetery, The Stand, Salem's Lot, Mr. Mercedes. That was the biggest surprise for me that Mr. Mercedes made it to the final 10. But, uh, I mean, I haven't read it, but I've just given the catalog that exists. I was kind of surprised. But uh, The Green Mile, Under the Dome, 112263, Fairy Tale, and Revival. Revival was a book, actually, I was going to read this month, and I think I'm going to hold off, A, because I held off for up until now, because I just still wasn't sure. Like, oh, Revival could make it. It was actually doing really well. So uh, it didn't end up winning, but <laughs> I, uh, I held off on Revival because I was like, well, what if it wins? In the top three, the uh, the the poll that I, I threw up yesterday that we already have a winner for, there are about 400 votes in, it's not going to change at this point because it's, I wouldn't say a runaway, it's closer than I thought it would be, but the top three were Misery, 1122-63, and Pet Cemetery. That may not come as a surprise to a lot of you because those are... Probably three of some of the most talked about books anyways. I mean, you could also throw It and obviously The Stand and, um, you know, a lot of people talk about Billy Summers too. Billy Summers didn't make it anywhere. I'm kind of surprised. However, the winner, the book club book for the Sick Book Club in November is going to be, I don't have a drum, 11-22-63 <laughs> is going to be the book for our Stephen King month in November. And I... Cannot freaking tell you how excited I am about this, personally, because it's one of my favorite books of all time. And, you know, I've also already read Misery and Pet Cemetery, and obviously 112263, so this was going to be a reread for me regardless. And I would have been happy to reread any one of these, but I just feel like experiencing the scope of 112263 with a group of people is going to be a really, really fun time, and I personally really can't wait for it. And I really can't wait to just reread this book that I just loved as much as I did, because I think it's going to be an interesting reread. There's a lot that happens that might, there might there might be some foreshadowing that I missed, some um, some character beats, I don't know. It's, it's going to be... It's going to be a really exciting thing for me. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of people in there were hoping for Misery and Pet Cemetery, but, you know, the majority of you did vote for 1122, so I'm, I'm hoping that everybody's uh, 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 mostly excited about this. So, 
yeah, that is going to be our sick book club for book for November. If you want to join in, uh, the Patreon link is below. It's a pretty fun community, I, I would say. And, uh, you know, it helps support me and doing these, this, uh, content, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So 112263 stoked. Stoked for, I'm so stoked for people that have not read this book to read this book. I, that's probably what I'm most excited about is just to go through the chats because we have a chat log for that for that month's book and just to see people's reactions to what's going on and like um, to hopefully mostly just watch people fall in love with the story is uh, is what I'm excited for. So anyway, uh, that is, uh, is going to be the book for November. Thanks everybody for voting. It was a good time. Moving on. Let's talk about, uh, let's, oh, let's talk about merch real quick. So uh, I had a pre-sale... Um, September 10th, uh, it was around there, and uh, all the all, I've got everything in, uh, everything is in my living room right now, and I'm going to be packaging that up tonight and tomorrow, so you should be getting shipping notifications if you ordered from early September um, real soon, and uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for grabbing one. Am I wearing one right now? I am. Hold, hold on, I can kind of pull this up and show you the puke. Uh, this is the pukey one. Uh, uh, uh. That's the puking book books are sick literally <laughs> i love it so much um and that also came in came in green and uh just another little merch uh, thing i'm gonna be doing hats and toques um toques for my american friends are beanies the proper name is toque just so you know uh, <laughs> but uh so because the nice thing about this though is uh, because hats and toques are it's a universal size what i think i'm gonna do is just order a whole bunch and just have them and then uh if people buy them uh, i can just ship them right away yeah I, I don't know if i'm i don't think i'm gonna do a pre-sale for the hats i think i'll just have them and then be able to so yeah anyway that's uh that's the merch update um oh real quick here oh actually while i'm holding this i'm reading the terror by dan simmons on my kindle and i uh, am really loving this book the this is a historical fiction horror book set up in the arctic we are following a crew of I think it's 126 people who are trying to discover the Northern Passage, um, and they get stuck in the ice, basically, and we are following the tale of survival of this crew and this captain, Crozier, and basically there's something out in the ice that keeps attacking them, they don't know what it is, they're all on edge, they're all keeping watch, and it's been a really fun book so far, I'm really, really quite enjoying this a lot, but the reason I grabbed, I was like, oh, the Kindle, is uh, there's new Kindles, I don't know if you guys saw the new Kindles that got released, but um, there's like a one called a Color Soft, I believe, and I want to say the only real difference is that uh, it's in color, so I guess you can look at the covers in color, which is cool, and I'm not gonna lie. When I first saw that, I was like, "I, I where do I buy this immediately? Because I want this right away. Because I have no control <laughs> when it comes to literature. I'm just like, yes, I'll buy it all. It's fine. It's healthy, right? <laughs> um, had a moment of clarity, and I was like, my Kindle is totally fine. And I don't even ever really look at the covers. The cover's not even on here right now, and I'm reading a book. The co what is this? Pencils? You know? I don't know. I don't think it matters to me, but. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it is kind of cool. It is kind of cool, and I do, I I do love the matcha one, which I think is the same size as the one I have. Only it's like this matcha green color. I want it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ah, I say I say I had a moment of clarity, and I'm like, no, I'm good with what I have. Next week I'll be like, guys, guess what? I got the new color soft. Um, no, that's not gonna happen. Okay, real fast, can I share this with you? Uh, for all my elder millennials. I uh, have been chatting with this guy, Jordan, who is a really cool guy, and he used to be a drum tech for The Used and for, like, tour around with My Chemical Romance and stuff like that, and he was like, we were kind of geeking out over that sort of music, and he was like, I can, can I send you a couple things? And, and he did, which is super kind of him, just so, so like, just such random cool stuff to have. Um, he sent me this My Chemical Romance all-access pass from, I guess, their tour in 2009, I want to say, which is just kind of cool <laughs> to have. Uh, sent me a drumstick used by um, the drummer of the used that is so shredded, and I think I now left that downstairs. I keep misplacing that. Um, got this kind of tour booklet for My Chemical Romance from their tour in Mexico, um, so it just has like all the information for their like what they're supposed to do, <laughs> which is I don't know, just so cool. And my favorite thing, I don't know if you guys ever listened to Boxcar Racer, which was Tom DeLonge's kind of side project for a little bit when he when Blink One Eighty Two. Uh, was kind of like, hmm. Um, 
Uh, it was one of my favorite albums ever. I pro- that's probably one of my most listened to albums of all time is that Boxcar Racer album. And he sent he sent me this. I don't know if it's gonna focus. Um, Boxcar Racer pick. This is Tom DeLonge's pick. It's got the BCR and then the uh, silhouette guy on the back there. Coolest thing ever, Jordan. Thank you so much. I so appreciate this. Um, coolest thing ever. I just had to share that. Okay. Moving on, uh, Between Two Fires is uh, the book I finished this week. I probably don't have a ton to say about this one, honestly. It was uh, it was a good read. It was a good read. I, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Some great character development, some great characters overall. That was probably my favorite part of it. Um, but it is like it is very plot driven too. Like it's kind of like great character development, but also a lot of plot going on. So it, it is a it is a fun mix. The priest was my favorite personally. And all I can say uh, when I finish this is that I can totally understand why people love this as much as it, as they do. It's brutal. It's quite the journey. Um, and it's very unique and very interesting. And yeah, I, I just, I really liked it. And I, I said this on my, you know, socials, but I, I will say, I feel like I started off really loving this. I was like, holy man, this is going to be one of the ones. And then kind of towards the end, it got, it got just a, a little chaotic a little messy a little rushed feeling and um so so by the end of it i was like okay okay i like that i like that quite a bit um so yeah i feel like it could have been a little i maybe i maybe kind of wish it was a little different the ending was a little different however uh that said overall great read between two fires would recommend that to anybody especially if you love fantasy horror um and you're looking for just something different and unique and um yeah and also look at the words i don't know if this is really going to translate well here but the words are so big, <laughs> and they're so bold. They're big and bold. I've never really seen font or print like this in a book before, and I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed reading it for that reason. Everything was crystal clear, so so that was nice. Uh, so between two fires, pretty cool book. I'm trying to figure out my next read. I don't know what it's going to be because the terror is a really long book. It's like I think the audio book is about thirty hours. It's like seven hundred, eight hundred pages or something like that. Um, so. I'm going to have time for another book. I just don't know what it's going to be. I really want to read some Octavia Butler. And I got The Parable of the Sower. And I've heard just such incredible things about that book. So that's pretty high up on the list. I have it here. Um, This one here. That might be it. I don't know if I'm a little horrored out right now. So this this might be a good one to, to jump into. But it is October, and it is going to be right around Halloween when I pick this next book, so it's like, what do I do? I just, I also just picked up this book called The End of Loneliness by Benedict Wells. A few people on Instagram recommended it to me, and it does seem like it's going to be a book that is right up my alley, but I'm like, do I want to sad? Do I want to be sad? Yeah, always, but, you know, around uh, Christmas, around October, Halloween, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't made a decision yet. Maybe Brother by Anya Allborn. Maybe just keep it full horror for the year. I'm not sure. Or for the month, I mean. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So rec- people recommend me something. What should I, What should my final book of October be? I don't know. Help me. <laughs> uh, and then the only other thing, what did I have here? Yeah, the only other thing I was going to talk about was this movie that I saw. Uh, two movies, actually. That it's called Hell House LLC. This movie is so good and so genuinely terrifying. This came out in 2016 and totally flew under the radar or over my head or whatever. I didn't even know. I'd never heard of it. I'd honestly never heard of it until I saw a few videos pop up where people are doing like, here are my top five scariest movies that I've ever seen. And that movie kept on making it to people's lists. And I was like, what is this? This sounds terrible. (laughs) But I watched it and it was fantastic. It was so scary right up my alley. Kind of a really fun mix of, like, Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity, maybe, I would say. Um, You know, there's just a lot of tension, a lot of, like, quiet moments that lead to big moments. And the camera work is fantastic. And just the overall story. Basically, what, what it's about is there's this old abandoned motel or hotel. And this group of, uh, of uh, guys and girls are going to turn it into a haunted house. You know, it's been abandoned for forever. They're going to go in, spend a couple weeks in there, living in there, just transforming it into a haunted house for the town to come enjoy. And essentially, stuff just starts happening when they're creating this haunted house. And, you know, it might sound corny, but it is really, I thought it was really well done. I was scared. It's hard to scare me, honestly. I I don't think I've been that 
freaked out watching a movie in quite a long time. And this one really did it. And I had heard that Hell House Origins was even better. And there is a Hell House 2 and 3. But the, I think they're like the or like you can just watch Origins by itself and be fine. Um, and so I watched that one afterwards because a lot of people were saying it is the best of the bunch. The fourth one, the one that just came out last year, is the best of the bunch, which is always a good sign. And I have to say, it really, really worked. It really was great. I was equally scared, <laughs> and uh, I would I would honestly have the two like almost on the same level. I would say I would say Origins gets under your skin a little bit more, and maybe Hell House LLC is just a smidge more fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, both incredible. So if you're looking for genuinely scary movies, check one of those out. I really love them. And that is pretty well going to wrap up my week 41. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I always appreciate it. And, again, if you want to join the Sick Book Club or, um, and it's the same thing. Sick Book Club is host hosted on the Patreon. I'll have the link below if you want to join up. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>